party folks, let's take a minute to talk about grandfathering as it pertains to legal non-conforming mobile home parks. Grandfathering came about as a way to protect our property rights. We talked in the last video about what legal non-conforming park was, is that that's a park that doesn't meet current city regulations. So therefore it has to be grandfathered in. Before we get into that, let's take a step back and talk about setbacks. Now a setback is the amount of space up to a boundary line. It could be up to the edge of a street. It could be the space between mobile home parks. Now think about this for a second. Let's say that you go out and purchase four acres or five acres or whatever. Your plan is to squeeze in as many mobile home parks into the space. Now, can you bump that first mobile home park right up against the edge of the street and then cram in more mobile homes so that they bump up against each other? Well, the answer is no, because the city says that you have to have certain setbacks, right? Certain space, like maybe, for example, 15 feet from the edge of the front of the street or say 10 feet between mobile home parks. Now, let's say that the original developer back in the 60s or 70s, the person who purchased the land, let's say they purchased four or five acres and they concluded that based on the rules back then uh, and based on the setback rules, they could squeeze in, say, 50 units. I'm just throwing numbers out there. 50 units in their four or five acres of land, right? And they operated that way for many, many years. But into the 80s and 90s, um, mobile home parks started to de develop a stigma, right? And there was a lot of local politicians who decided that they wanted to get rid of these mobile home parks. Now, they cannot just outright reject your business license. That would be unconstitutional. So one of the things that they attempted to do, many cities throughout the country attempted to do this, was to change the rules, change the setback rules, right? So whereas before there used to be 15 feet between mobile home parks, now they, they required 20 feet. And then a couple of years down the line, they would change the rules again, so say 22 feet. As a business owner, as an operator of a mobile home park, this would be devastating for me as a business, right? Because where before I could operate 50 units, the new rules say that I can only, there's only space for 45 units. And then the next year, 40 units. And then the next year, 30 units. This would be devastating for me. So. What happened is that a lot of these mobile home park owners started to fight back. And in uh, several cases across the country in many states, the, um, they fought back by going, to this, uh, by going to court, right? And some of these cases went all the way to the Supreme Court. And in every instance, the cities lost. And the concept of grandfathering was born. Now, why is this important? Why should you care about any of this? Well, it's simple. If you intend to operate and purchase your own uh, mobile home park or whether you're an investor who wants to jump in on somebody else's syndicated deal, you want to be an informed investor. You want to understand mobile home parks and the rules that apply to mobile home parks. And this is one of them, grandfathering, setback rules. You want to be able to ask an operator these sort of questions. Have you looked into the grandfathering rules? This is part of your due diligence. You want to be an informed investor. More information, more consistent results more money in your pocket.